Hi, welcome to the tutorial for recurrence intervals in watershed management, where we are going to start off at the website wateroffice.ec.gc.ca. Uh, it is here that we are going to look up the information for the Grand River at the Galt station for water flow data at the Grand River. And uh, it's at this website that we can get information on any stream in Canada. So it's a very useful site to know about. Um, we're going to start off by looking for historical data. So we're going to block off that link. And the server can be um, quite busy, so it may take a while to download. Having said that, it'll probably be fast. And once there, we are going to do a search on the Grand River at Galt. We're looking for recurrence intervals um, because recurrence intervals will tell us the odds of a particular peak flow happening. Um, so for example, a recurrence interval of 50 years would tell us not that the storm happens every 50 years, but that the odds of it recurring are 1 in 50. So here we have our hydrometric station, um, data station. So we're going to do a search on the Grand River. And search. Oh, that was fast. And don't expect it to be that fast all the time. And we are looking at for the Grand River at Galt. So this is the location of one of the stream profiles. So we're going to look for the information that's been collected from 1913 to 2009. So we're going to check off that box. And we're going to move to the top of the page. And we want the peak data, which in other words is the search and we're going to ask for it to be numerically presented in our current browser and we're going to ask for the report to be obtained and as I mentioned earlier um, the speed at which this data comes up can vary a lot so we'll just keep it in real time so that it, if you are trying it for an assignment um, do not be freaked out if it takes a long time. Uh, sometimes it will take a long time. This one's my favorite, Grand River at Loch Lomond. So a 50-year storm, the odds of it recurring are 1 in 50. It doesn't happen every 50 years. It's uh, 1 in 50, the chance that it will occur any year. And of course, with um, climate change, um, the 100-year storms, chance of it recurring are 1 in 100, 1% 1 chance of it happening any year. Um, with climate change, the chances of those are actually increasing, but um, the more frequently they occur, the more statistically is the chance of it happening. There we go. So Grand River at Galt, peak flow, and we have information that's been collected supposedly since 1913, uh, but we only see data from 1914. Uh, you'll see five columns. First one is the year. Second one is the maximum instantaneous discharge, which is the peak. Minimum instantaneous discharge. Maximum daily discharge. And minimum daily discharge. And what's interesting to note is that the maximum daily discharge is lower than the peak. 
so something to keep in mind. You'll also see that um, on some of these there will be a B after the number. Uh, if you look at the last page you'll see that B means that these were collected during ice conditions. And I would not discount values that were kept or that were collected in ice conditions. Um, they are definitely valid and especially in times when we have ice jams they are definitely having an impact on the environment so it's something worth keeping. Um, you notice that in 1930 we had data collected, 1931 nothing was collected so stream gauge was down for whatever reason then was collected again in 1932 and on um, up until 2009 so this is a really good uh, site but the um, rule is that if we um, have a number of years and then for some reason there is data missing for one year you do not you start collecting again the year after in which the data is collected again. So if we had a gap in 1936, for example, we would start collecting again at 1937 and we would discount everything prior to that. So we are going to cut and paste everything from 1932 on. And again, it's the first and second columns that we want, but because we're cutting and pasting, we uh, have to get everything here. So I'm just going to copy and paste into Excel. And you'll notice that when I go back to the website, uh, for example, in 1989, um, we had 284, that's cubic meters per second. Uh, the peak was at 20 to 4 Eastern Standard Time on March 15th. We don't need that time. We just need the 284. So I've just cropped that information in the second column. So all I have is the year and the peak discharge. Then I am going to sort it. So I'm going to block these two columns out. And I want to sort it from highest to lowest. So my ranking, or sorry, I'm going to sort first of all. So I'm going to go to data and I'm going to sort. And I'm going to sort by column B. And I'm going to go from largest to smallest. And if I just did it by column B, uh, after everything was sorted through, my years would be all jumbled up and I want to keep the years along with my discharges. So then I'm going to say after that, go by column A and do that from largest to smallest as well. Okay, so that gives me my largest was in 1974 at 1550 cubic meters per second and then in 1954 at 1360. So I'm going to give my ranking uh, the highest rank as number one and second highest number two, third highest number three. And I could go all the way down but I want to save myself some time. So I'm going to highlight the first three. I'm going to move my cursor into the lower right hand corner until it goes to a solid plus and then I'm going to click and drag. And that ranks from 1 to 77. Now, next I'm going to look for ties. Um, the ranks incidentally are given the letter M and when I'm looking for ties, I'm looking for years that have the same discharge. And believe it or not, they do happen in real life. And when I have a tie in ranking, 
the year that happens first gets the lower numerical rank. So there's a rule right there for you. So here I have a tie between 1972 and 1975. They both had 852 cubic meters per second. 1972 happened first, so it gets the lower value. So it gets the 12. And 1975 gets the 13. And there's also a tie here of 1969 and 1940. So 1940 happened first, so it gets the 20. And 1969 gets the 21. So I would eyeball and see if there's any other ties and fix them accordingly. And then I'm going to calculate my recurrence interval. And the recurrence interval formula is the number of years, which happens to be 77, plus 1, which would make it 78, divided by the rank. So I'm just going to insert my formula here. So it's going to be the sum of 77 plus 1. divided by the rank, which is over in column C. Alrighty. Now, again, I can cut, cut, cut and drag in order to copy this formula. And there's my recurrence interval. Now, what I want to do is I want to plot a graph where I have the peak discharge on my y-axis and my recurrence interval on my x-axis. So I'm going to insert over here a graph and I'm going to go for scatter design and I want the lines collect connected and so that's going to select that and then I'm going to go for my design and I'm going to select my data and I'm going to give it a title which is the recurrence interval Grand River And I'm going to add okay. Okay, graph to be continued.